Hi again, it's Beth Hoving of Living Hope Counseling Center. Welcome back. Uh, we've been talking about change, all trickling down from that model of becoming what God wants me to be, making me like Jesus, helping me to walk in love. Those are the big rocks, guys. Everything falls under that banner, which makes this simple but not easy. We've talked a lot about practicing change. Uh, I have used that uh, in, in uh, uh, situations of conflict or not getting along with somebody else. But I want to make one more point about the heart. Maybe you're not a person that explodes in anger. Maybe you're not a person that's really experiencing any relationship problems. I want to bring this down to what's going on inside of us. And let's just use anxiety for an example. Maybe you're a person that just lives in a lot of fear. And I think sometimes it's harder to see when uh, our responses are not outward uh, and angry. We can easily pinpoint that. They're, they're easy ones to target because we know right away, I know this is wrong. But suppose you're a person that's just overrun with anxiety, just worry all the time. And you say, well, Beth, how does that apply to me? How does this desire and demand thing apply to me? I don't know that I'm demanding anything. I just worry. And I suppose I shouldn't worry. But, but what makes that? Uh, how do I determine what the demand is and, and what the need is? And what the sin is. Well, Romans 14, 23 says this, whatever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Now, let's look at your desire. Hold that scripture in your mind and let's look at your desire. If you're a worrier, for example, uh, what is your desire in that? I just want, I just want everything to be okay. I just don't want anything bad to happen. Let's make that desire. You know, different temperaments struggle with different desires. And uh, so maybe you're one of those, I, you know, I just like life to sally along just fine and I'll just be okay if nothing bad happens. Well, what is that rooted in? What are you wanting from that desire? Um, you know, most of the time what we're looking for is a certainty. If nothing bad happens, I won't have to worry whether I'll run out of money. I won't have to worry whether my spouse would leave me or my child will serve God as they're an adult. Maybe they're having tough teenage years. I don't have to worry about whatever it is that you worry about, your health. Uh, what is that indicative of? I don't want anything bad to happen. Okay, but let's say, how are you responding then day to day? How are you living in the midst of this desire? Are you living with those two great commandments, preferring your brother, doing what's best for him? Or are you so consumed with worry that you find yourself not really being aware of your brother at all? Maybe in your quest for things to always be okay, you're not stepping out actively and loving because that might require something from you. That might take away the self-protectiveness. You don't want to risk anything, so therefore you don't offer the love that God wants you to. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes uh, when we're not loving, uh, when we're not, when we're caught up in, in uh, worry and fear, we are not being what God wants us to be. We are not living by faith. How do you respond when you're not getting that desire for nothing bad to happen? Anxious, unloving, as we just talked about, because we're certainly not thinking about our brother. We're thinking about ourselves. And, and here's the other one. Uh, we're looking all the time. There's a hypervigilance sometimes when we're anxious. Do any of these describe you? Do any of these describe you when your desire is just for things to be okay? You say, that way I don't have to worry as if that accomplishes anything right. And you probably know that, but you can't seem to help yourself. What goes on inside of you? Are you anxious? Unloving? Probably. Hypervigilant? What is that all about? That means I'm trying so hard to control my world that, that I'm my own God. I've lost sight of who God is. That's why Romans, uh, whatever I just said, Romans 14, uh, 23, I think it was, said that whatever ever is not of faith is sin. We're trying to isolate sin within us. And sometimes sin, well, sin is insidious very often. We don't see it. But in some of these situations, it's particularly insidious because it's kind of veiled. You might be kind of a really nice person. Uh, you might just kind of sally along and do things okay. But what if God asks you to step out? What about when he says, go in love deliberately? What about when he says, I want you to give 
some of what you have and you're afraid of letting go. You see what I'm saying? This is why we're getting down to the motive of the heart. When you find yourself responding in a way you know is not pleasing to God, that's called sin. I don't care if it doesn't feel ugly. I don't care if it's like almost your natural feeling best friend. Sin is basically rebellion against God. God, I don't want to do it your way. I don't want to see it your way. I don't want to have to trust you. I want to trust me and what I can see. That's ultimately self on the throne of your life. That's not submission to God. What would it look like to put on what we talked about in Matthew 26, 39, where Jesus expressed his desire, Lord, take this cup from me before he went to the cross. Take the cup. That was his desire, his heart's desire. Your heart's desire might be, oh God, I'm so afraid of what might happen here. Uh, I might lose my job. My child may, may turn out to, to go through a real hard time and not be honoring to you and scare me to death. All of those things you pour out to God. And yet, Lord, just as Jesus said, take the cup, but nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. How would that look like for you to say something like that? Oh, Lord, please care for my child. Please care for my finances. Please help me to step out and do the things you want me to do. Help me to trust you, Lord, because not my will, but yours. And so we begin to make those moves towards walking in faith keeping our thoughts centered on his truth, calling sin, sin. Lord, whatever is not pleasing to you is sin. Help me to call it that. Help me not minimize it. Help me not just say, oh, well, my family always was fretters. My mom always said I was a worrier. You're minimizing sin. You will not see change. It's kind of like a person that blows up. Well, that's just my Italian temper. You're not going to see change if you don't call sin, sin. Sometimes those of us, I say, I'm not really this way because I'm more the explosive type, but sometimes the types that are the gentle inward types really can see the sin of someone else's anger, but they self-righteously think they're okay because they don't respond like that. But what's going on inside? Are you holding bitterness and resentment when you don't express? Are you running around in anxiety when your world is threatened? What does that say about faith? What does that say about how much you know about the God who cares for you? These are just some more thoughts that I want to bring your way. I know God is working in you. He loves you right where you at. Little bit by little bit, he's changing you. 2 Corinthians 3.18, beholding the glory of the Lord as in a mirror, as I'm gazing at Jesus, that means. I'm being transformed into that same image he's making me look like himself, little at a time, from one degree of glory to the next, by the Spirit of God. Praise God, he's working in you. He's empowering you. He's making you able to do what he asks. Hope this has been helpful. See you soon. Bye.